Hello and welcome to this video tutorial series Crypto 101 Bitcoin wallets basics and how they work. So what is a wallet? Let's look at um, what a wallet really is and how you can use it. So a wallet is simply a digital account or digital safety box used to store your cryptocurrency. And this is typically done via software on your computer or phone. However, there are also hard wallets that can store cryptocurrency offline and we're going to have a look into them in a second. So there's two important aspects to a wallet. Um, that is a wallet address and private keys. The address is equivalent to your bank account number or your safety, safety box number and location. So if I want to send you money, well, I would need that bank account number in order to send it to you, right? The private keys, well, they are keys that unlock your wallet and authorize outgoing transfers from one account to another. And, and this is equivalent to the PIN on your debit or credit card. So the address is the public facing site on your account and works similar to an email address. Bitcoins are sent from one address to another. And you must have an address to send and receive Bitcoins. And that is exactly what we want to put in our Swiss Gold Global back office. If we want to receive payments from our mining, well, you need to put your um, address, your public key into it, this address, all right? Very important because Swiss Gold Global um, is when you have purchased the uh, hash power for your mining, it's paying you on a daily basis. But they have to pay you somewhere, so they need your account number. And this is exactly what we're speaking here, your address. Now, the private keys, that's what Swiss Code Global doesn't need. <laughs> so the private keys unlock your wallet and authorize outgoing transfers from your account. This is similar to pin on your debit card or the password to your email address. You wouldn't give it to anyone, would you? However, each address comes with a unique private key, very sophisticated password, um, which is impossible to remember. So you've got to store it somewhere and you've got to store it somewhere very safely. So you just don't um, have it somewhere on your computer. You Maybe your computer can crash, all right? Uh, most of the Bitcoins ever mined are actually lost because people lost their keys, um, their private keys, because they didn't remember or the computer crashed or whatsoever. So you really have to be careful with that, all right? So... And because this unique private key um, that provides the access to the coins in that address stored. So that's a thing which I really have to uh, very much emphasize you guys that you do store that very safely. So let's look at generating a Bitcoin address very simply at bitaddress.org. Um, so you see here on the left side share, on the right side you see secret. So what would you put into Swissco Global Back Office? Obviously, the shared key, right? Um, the shared key is like your bank account number where people want to send you uh, money. The um, secret key is your public key. So you can, in, in, in question of second, open a uh, wallet, a Bitcoin wallet in um, bitaddress.org. All right. Um, so this is just one example here. And it's an encrypted number of, of so many uh, combinations, which is... Uh, hardly possible to hack. Now, uh, let's look at the types of wallet I would recommend or I am myself using. Uh, but before that, again, understand a wallet is simply or is as simple as a single pairing of a Bitcoin address with its corresponding Bitcoin private key. So you see here, um, how that combination, of course, is managed determines what type of wallet it is. So we have here three types of wallets. You see that white one over here. This is a Tresor wallet. Um, and this, uh, there's Tresor, there's Le Ledger Nano wallet. Uh, those are what we call um, cold storage hardware wallets or paper wallet was what you saw before in the slide. Um, now we see here with this beautiful color, that wallet, that is what we call a hot wallet. It's a desktop application, only works on desktop, this one, this particular one. There are others who work on mobile and on desktop, right? Um, and here 
Coinbase. That is a wallet what we, what we would uh, call into the category online wallet type bank model. So it's really a combination of both. Um, and uh, to go into detail a little bit more um, into that, well, Coinbase um, is an exchange. Um, that means um, you can purchase uh, different cryptocurrencies. You can do it, uh, a bank transfer to Coinbase and you can um, then purchase different coins. You can pay with your credit card in Coinbase. You can store um, your cryptocurrency in Coinbase. But since it acts like a bank model, well, I gotta also warn you. So, um, meaning not to um, not to um, create scarcity, but um, of course we know banks can close, right? Banks can be shut down. Banks can go bankrupt, uh, whatsoever. And so that means if you have all your eggs in one basket and and all your cryptocurrency stored in the Coinbase model. Well, if, if this goes under, I mean, we never know. We are, we are in a very young market still of cryptocurrency. Well, then, of course, it is gone, right? So, w with that said, um, it really depends on what do you want to do, okay? What is your view um, on cryptocurrency? What, what, like, for me, um, uh, for me, I want to obviously uh, create very much wealth with cryptocurrency. I am creating wealth with cryptocurrency. So um, I have uh, a part of my portfolio in gold and silver in, in, in other things. Um, you know, so you may have want to have it in, you know, in all kinds of real estate, whatsoever you have. And so you should think about um, put part into as well cryptocurrency. Well, I, I can't say you should, but this is, this is up to you. I do that, right? So I have a long-term view with cryptocurrency and um, I don't want to just make a few bucks. I really want to uh, build great wealth. So I wouldn't store great wealth in Coinbase. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't store great, great wealth in a, in a hot wallet, in a mobile or desktop application either, honest, honestly to say. Uh, I want to store it in something which is very safe, which is a cold storage, a hard wallet. But if you start out with cryptocurrency, let's say you do your first small $30 mining contract, well, you are fine with them. You know, it's really not a problem. It's perfect to start off, have a couple of hundred dollars in it uh, or even more. That's okay. Um, but if you really um, think big, you should definitely go for a uh, Tresor wallet. Now, the Tresor you need to pay for or a Nano Ledger you need to pay for. So they cost actually money while the others are free. All right. So let's pick a wallet and I'm going to do more videos on the each and individual wallet explaining more in depth to you. This is just a really quick overview. So let's look at Exodus. Exodus is a very easy um, application, so you download to your desktop, super easy um, and intuitive to use. And you can store and not just one uh, coin, so not just um, the Bitcoin, you can store Algo, you can store Bitcoin, you can st uh, store Dash, you can store Dogecoin, Ethereum, Decred, Golem and Litecoin. So not just one coin in, in such per se. Um, that's called Exodus. A really great wallet. And let's say you have uh, quite some um, uh, Bitcoins now accumulated and you can want to shift some out and you want to put them into Ethereum. Yeah, you can do that very easily in within the wallet. All right. Bitwaller. Um, Bitwaller is very good as well. It uh, works similar to um, BitPay here, which I have listed, or to Xapo. Very similar. It also uh, has an application, a mobile application to it. Um, you can have and attach your debit card so that you can uh, literally take your bitcoins and go shopping somewhere. Um, and you, it converts in the currency where you go shopping right now. So it doesn't matter which country you are. It work, works very, very well. Um, this, those, those types of wallets. Now, with those types of wallets, um, what can happen there is that, um, for example, um, Xapo recently is, is changing quite a lot the fee structure. That means when you have incoming money as well as outgoing, um, but incoming money, um, if you have very tiny uh, bits of money coming in because you may just purchase a very small mining contract, well, then uh, you really have to look at it because it could be that you pay more in fees. Well, of course, if you 
get your, uh, get your, uh, if you have the Exodus wallet or if you have a Trezor wallet or Nano Ledger wallet or other wallets, um, you have no fees for incoming money. But those, um, here, you know, fixed, uh, 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 Xapo and so on, they charge you. So those things I will get into more into detail when, um, when I do the each and individual video on the different wallets. This is just a quick overview here. The Trezor stores also different cryptocurrency. So it stores um, not just Bitcoin, but also it stores Dash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Now, others to consider, um, besides, of course, a dam is a JAX, for example, a, um, Airbus. Blockchain.info is also a wallet, and a lot of people using Blockchain.info. I would not recommend it anymore, and the fees have just gotten out of, uh, <laughs> yes, too much. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend any more blockchain.info, but a lot of people have it. Um, and so I have to mention it here. So that was uh, today's overview just about wallets. I hope this uh, helps you now to understand um, how to proceed further in, um, uh, in, in, in your cryptocurrency experience. So with that, thank you so much. And if you have more information, please contact your sponsor or um, write an email to contact at swissgoldglobal.com. Thank you so much.